channel if you're new here welcome welcome and if you are returning subscribers thank you so much for coming back um so in south africa we're still on a lockdown is yes. uh today's day 12 i think so i was like let me wake up let me pick my face just to to feel better because of black started my periods on monday so i was like feeling really really sick and all of that so i thought uh let me just pick my face because also i filmed uh, a book review for the yearning i looked good and everything but the content was not so impressive i sounded like i don't read books and i don't know what, what books are about so then i decided i'm gonna refilm the review so that I can you know do the right thing so I wrote things down and everything so let's just get right into it okay so we're reviewing uh, the yearning the yearning is a South African um, written author it's an it's an South African born author her name is Mohale Mashiko and yes um, I love her I love um, the style of writing for her so just to give you a background on the book the book was published by picado africa and it is basically under the fiction section of picado africa and i love the color i love how this eye you know is so captivating for me because you and also the title and the eye the yearning it's sort of like you can interpret it as whatever that you want and i just i just enjoyed i loved the um, the cover and i think um i was sort of drawn to it so yes yeah, so um a brief history of mohale mashiko mohale mashiko is a multi-disciplinary storyteller singer and um songwriter who loves exploring the unknown the yearning is mashiko's debut um novel which was released to widespread acclaimed in 2016 this paper back, uh, paperback edition features how from Sweet Valley to the yearning Mashuko's account to publishing a novel. So uh, yes, this is a, I love the cover. I love everything about the cover. So I've written down notes about the book on, on here because I didn't want to, to mumble. I'm already sounding like I'm mumbling, but yeah, let's just um, do this. So then I've highlighted what the title of the book is. Where, uh, what the author is, Mashuko is a South African born, and I believe she was born in Soweto. And the publisher, I've already said it's Picado Africa, publication date, it was 2016. And this is, this is, I think this is the second edition of the book, the one that I own. It's, I think it's the second edition. Um, it's, it's, it, it was reprinted or something like that. And... Yes, and a total, in total, it has, I'll tell you now, it has, sorry about that, I blurred that out, it's got 187 pages, which is not bad, right? And actually, you, once you start reading the book, you realize that it's actually small pages, you want to, you know, you wish there was more coming from it. So, basically, um, <laughs> basically, if you've been around in this channel, you'll know that that is my word basically i'm always saying basically so um the yearning is a book that highlights a journey of a family of uh people who are gifted whose uh, lineage and um background is of people who are gifted uh you know spiritually and whatnot so then um in the yearning mashiko um Mohale basically highlights the story of marubini marubini is a daughter of um a man called Jabulani, who was also a traditional healer and um, who, who passed away uh, in a train in, in, in the location because there was it was around the time of the Inkata and the ANC riots and whatnot. So then he is um, he was one of the people that was uh, killed during that time because he witnessed uh, an Inkata um, an ANC guy who assumed that he was an Inkata person because he had his panther, but he had his panther because 
he was a traditional healer and then they moved away from him and then they went to somebody else and then when they got off the train he followed those people and then he had gone out to buy her, his daughter like a cake and she wanted red shoes and the daughter is Marubini and then he he got burnt alive according to the story but then I think as you read you realize that there's actually more to it than that so then it basically just highlights the journey that Umar Rubini takes as she grows, you know, as she, 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 she fights the, um, the gift that she's been given, also being haunted uh, by the past of, um, there was a time when she was abducted and she was raped by a guy who was um, a guard at the school nearby her house. So it's those kind of things, it's, it's, it, it, it touches a lot on, on trauma it touches on spiritual gifts and it also for me it also sort of highlights how we can try to run away from who we are but like we'll all like it will always come at you it doesn't matter what happens so she then eventually she makes it she 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 makes it she grows she gets work she works in Cape Town she's working in a, a field where it's predominantly white people and it's predominantly male people which i think it's a lot it's like it touches a lot and on how as black women you know we are we are breaking into new um industries that probably have not been uh occupied by black people so i like the fact that she highlights on that and and i i draw strength from uh the fact that she did not settle or to like make herself feel like herself like she didn't make herself small so that she can accommodate everybody around her she stood up for herself she was resilient she was um firm standing and then she falls in love she falls in love with Barry, who's a restaurant owner i think he's french yes he's french and um so she falls in love so i liked I, I i always like it when um an african like a black woman story is told and there's the aspect of love where they find love because so much we've been portrayed of, like as people who are difficult and are impossible and like we are not meant to to be loved or like um we treated as subhuman and whatnot so i love how um she is treated with so much grace and she's treated with so much love and caring from her partner but then obviously she battles with accepting that amount of love because i think of past traumas and also i think being um a person who sort of believes maybe this is too good to be true but then so the, the story goes on where she now battles her gift and she has to suffer where people don't believe that she's actually like not trying to kill herself because there's this dark thing that follows her and like there's a time when she was in a bath and then she ended up she woke up in hospital with cuts and and she 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 kept hearing um a bell she would always hear like i don't know if you guys know like in the olden days in like most schools they used to sing and there was also the bell so she would always hear those two things and then even in that instance she heard that but nobody believed around her um that she was not trying to commit suicide so her mother her her partner also was a bit skeptical whether she did try to commit suicide so it, it it touches on it also touches on depression as well which i think is very important and i'm i'm, I'm so glad that our generation is embracing um mental health and we we like really taking it seriously we are making the relevant um uh steps people are going to therapy people are doing things to make sure that we take care of our mental health because i think in the black community mental health has always been like ugh, it's taboo or it's like full of shy like you know <laughs> but I, I i love that the fact that the book actually addresses that even though it's not directly um um and it's not fully blown topic in the book but i like the fact that it touches on that so it touches on a lot of aspects of life but um for me what really stood out with with this book was um the lesson that spiritual being spiritually gifted 
it's not something that you can decide on and i love how um when she then starts um going through the journey of discovering whether this is something that's passing or she is indeed gifted is that um ukoko, ukoko togo, who's um the grandmother who raised her, her father who who says no let's take let's 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 not rush this thing let's 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 wait it out you know we'll know with time and i think most of the time when it comes to spirituality and a lot of things we are so much in a rush to get results we're so much in a rush to like let's do this you know but where else in in this book it shows us that you can't you can't rush anything of the spirit you need to allow it to to flow in and eventually get you to that level and then um i love the character of the mother i have a love and hate <laughs> um feeling for the mother i feel that um she has suffered so much trauma um before like in her life losing her husband when she had a, a young baby and she was also pregnant i think at the time or the or simpu simpu is um, marubini's brother was really young so I have sort of like a love and hate uh, relationship for her, um, love and hate feeling for her because I feel as though she is so hard on everything. She is so closed and she like she didn't allow herself to let go of the trauma. But also it's not in my position to dictate to how long a person should deal with trauma or let go of trauma. But so yeah, so there's that whole element, there's that struggle of her trying to protect her kids and also trying to make sure that they they are not um they're not like not fulfilling who they are because of her trying to shield them and protect them from what she has experienced with her father because there was a lot of things about him not being a traditional healer him being a witch and and, and all of those things and so i have that sort of really like i I love her, but then I feel like oh, that that was a bit extreme. So, so yes, yeah, so I, I I like the mother, and one of the characters for me that really stood out was Unkhunu. Unkhunu is um, Marubini's uh, maternal grandmother. I love her wisdom. I love her sense. I love how she, she, she her aura. Okay, that sounds it sounds it sounds bizarre for me to say an aura, but when I read a book, I put myself in the book and I I immense myself I sort of imagine things and whatnot. So from what I'm getting uh from what I've read in the book, uh Unkhunu was such a great character. She um she was loving. She she was also practical. She was she was a person who brought about practicality in, in a lot of things. She said, okay, this is what needs to be done. Is this done? Let's do this. Uh, okay you do that and whatnot so I, I i enjoyed that about her that she was and she was also like one of the independent women in the book which i loved which we we did not see with her, like our great grandmothers but i think no i'm lying there was independence with our great grandmothers it's just that it was never um highlighted as that you know so i i enjoyed her i enjoyed her character a lot and um I think this book was a very holistic book for me because there was also Untate Muholu who was um, the grandfather to Marubini who was such a gentle soul, you know, he was loving, who um, I think Maru played a vital role in Marubini's life because he they had so much memories together, uh, you know, listening to his story. And if you, if you, you grow up like elokshini like in in the township and whatnot we all grew up listening to stories on the radio like and we all like followed them like i know because my family is in the valley we used to listen to equal fm where we listen to a story and you couldn't miss it because like it was an ongoing story and like you'd imagine you'd be like oh are they gonna catch this person and then, so that for me was very nostalgical because it reminded me of um of also my own memories with my family growing up with my grandfather and my grandmother listening to his story and whatnot and just bonding over the small things which i think our generation needs to do more of and i think with the lockdown 
I hope that we sort of like do introspection and we, we work on our relationships and how we um, interact with our families instead of always being so disconnected and whatnot. So, and then um, I think the a person who also plays a very big role is Simpiwe. Simpiwe is uh, Marubini's brother who grew up not really having an idea of how the father looked like. Then he then discovers his own gift. You know, he's he's an artist. He, he draws, but he is a, like I think arts on its own is spiritual, definitely without any shadow of doubt. So with him, he draws things before they even happen, and so he sort of is the person that is a catalyst in um, in Marubini's journey and in her. Uh, taking up her calling and, and doing that. So I really liked how of a gentle soul he was to her sister and how also he navigated, you know, struggle, uh, like fighting this gift that he has because he didn't even understand what it was and what was going on. So at the end, I love the fact that it, 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 it from, from that end, it showed that there was um, Marubini found finally found the place where she needed to go for her training, her roots, uh, for her to be traditional. She um, was married. She had a, a, a daughter. She had a child. And yes, and she was she was, she was was happy. So I'd, I'd highly recommend um, for, for anyone to read this book. And when you read this book, especially if you are dedicated to one one form of belief I'd, I'd, I'd urge you to have a very open mind uh, about when you read this book because if you are going to be judgy if you're going to be um, religious then it defeats the, the purpose of you reading the book because it, it, it you won't learn what you're supposed to learn and you won't flow with what you need to flow because you you don't have an open mind you know i'll never detect to anyone what the um denomination should be i'd never do that you know but i think if you want to read this book have a very open mind and uh really i love how she um she talks about spirituality in in a way that is like so immaculate at some point because i remember even asked um my friend Linz, who's part of uh, my book club, uh, and I was like, she speaks so much about traditional. She gives you an idea of what it is, but also without revealing, you know, the secrets that um, are within spirituality and 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 you know going through the process and whatnot. So it, it it's so refreshing for me to to actually read this book, and and I highly recommend it. So then what we're going to do is we are then going to the conclusion. The conclusion, I've already covered that. And um, I couldn't really find any similar book to this book because I think it's unique. It's on a league of its, of its own for me. You know, her style of write, writing is so captivating. And the way she moves from... Um, like she'll go from past tense to present tense, but without leaving you behind, you know, you, you follow, you don't need to go back and, and be like, yo, hi, why, how did we get here? Let me go back. It's so captivating in such a way that I was like, um, I think I read this book in three days, but I would have finished it sooner, but I didn't want to finish. So I'd read it and be like, no, I'm already halfway. And so I don't want to finish it. I want to, I want to soak in the book, you know? And so, um, I love it. I wish like I could get more books by her. Obviously, no pressure. And um, the lessons that I've learned from the book is 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 that you can't like I've already highlighted. You can't rush spiritual giftedness, and that um, it's always a good idea to find out who you are, where your roots are, you know, where you come from. Because I, I think that plays a role into sort of helping you move forward and where you're going. And and that always be open to love and um, 
be open to love allow yourself to to be loved you know don't um don't be closed off you yeah and and i learned that we are we are very dynamic people i think as black people we are we out of this world we are we are the best we like there's nothing there's nothing that compares to who we are and this book really showed me showed me aspects of of us as black people that i probably have never looked at you know because i grew up in a family that so it's so it's so ironic because my great grandmother was inyanga and she was a person who healed kids so her her, her focus is all it was always kids you know and was not and then my grandmother passed away she passed away in my sister's born in 20, 2009 my great grandmother passed away in 2009 i will why am i being emotional but my great grandmother passed away in 2009 she was like the best thing i loved her so much um there's always a connection between us but like in our family after that there was no one who is in young you know and and there was never like she never forced anything on anyone uh with regards to that and then my parents um they not they don't they don't even my dad doesn't even know how to pass you know when we had to go one time go pass them we had to literally go ask my uh my my uncle which is my 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 dad's brother who's late now um Guti, what do we do what do we need to buy and whatnot but i was still also young i think i was still in high school and then when i moved to Joburg to go study i then started going to a charismatic christian church so obviously i was very religious i was like very and i was a shitty person when i was um when i was like a focused religious person i i can say so i can say i was a really shitty person <sighs> christians please don't come for me but i was i was really not it, it it's not about the it's not about christianity it's about me personally i was i was not i was very judgy i was very i had a very closed mind if if this was 2011 i wouldn't have read this book that's all I can say. I would have like been like, ooh, uh, uh, this is not for me. It's not aligned. But I've grown and, and, and I'm growing into myself and I'm getting to know myself more. And I think moving here and being alone and being alone from everything has sort of helped me understand who I am, understand, um, you know, spirituality in, in a more different way. You know, it's not, it's a, it's a very... It's a complex thing. It's not just okay. This is wrong. This is right, and whatnot. I think it's it, it's complex, and I'm glad that I've actually evolved, and um, I'm a better person. I'd like to believe. Obviously, there's always room for improvement. So yes, oh, I'm mumbling. So this book, I I really enjoyed this book. I love it, and giving it a rating of five out of five, I definitely give it a four the one is i wish it was bigger i think i wish that the story was like more but but i really enjoyed the book and i highly recommend it i got the book at bargain books um but i think you can get the book also at exclusive books as well and if you have any inquiries i'll also in the description below i'll just put muhali's uh, twitter uh, handle i think if you have any more questions with really in relation to the book you can always um talk to her she's very engaged like she engages um from the time that i've interacted with her on twitter so uh before i mumble and i make a very long video uh thank you for coming thank you for watching thank you for sticking around up until this time